Okay, here's another one. This time it's uh, David Croft again, old Crofty. Don't think I've done this one before. Uh, also on the 16th of December, that Thursday that Mercedes had until um, which, with which to lodge their appeal. So it's this uh, same talking head that uh, interviewed Chandok. And we'll go through the same crap once again presented to the world. This is the same narrative being presented by the same faces conditioning the masses. And let's hear what Crofty's got to say. Will we see Lewis Hamilton on the grid for the first race in 2022? Let me be really selfish here. I hope so. Uh, this is just the start of a great rivalry between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. And Lewis Hamilton, in my opinion, the greatest driver of all time that we've seen on the track. I don't want to see him quit the sports in these surroundings, in this controversial uh, fashion at the end of what has been a brilliant season uh, that has been rather marred by and, and left with a sour taste in all our mouths, really, uh, by what happened in the closing stages in Abu Dhabi. That's not saying Max Verstappen is not a worthy world champion. He is. But Lewis Hamilton would also have been a very worthy world champion had he won that race that he dominated for so long. Did he deserve to lose that race? Not in the situation and the circumstances that he did. And I'm not. Did he deserve to lose? Not in the situation and the circumstances that he did. No, there's a clear answer to that. No. Did he deserve to lose? No. Okay, but what you're doing. Your language makes people, it directs people's thought process. This is all by design. In a very worthy world champion, had he won that race that he dominated for so long, did he deserve to lose that race? No. Simple as that. Certainly didn't. He was leading it for pretty much its entirety. He would have won it had the rules been followed and not purposely broken to manufacture a last lap shootout. You've broken the rules, you've changed the outcome of the race, you've changed the outcome of the World Championship. Not in the situation and the circumstances that he did. And I'm not surprised he feels the way that he does. I'm not surprised Toto Wolff feels... Oh, they feel. It's about how they feel, is it? Or what is it actually happened? Oh, is, is it about how you feel or did some did a robbery actually take place? Oh, they feel they've been robbed or were they robbed? The way that he does, nor the rest of the Mercedes team. They feel that they've been robbed of a driver's world championship. They have been robbed. Oh, they feel, they feel, they feel. Look at the look at the way that the information is presented. Okay, it's by design. And in doing so, it's rather stopping them celebrating what is an amazing, historic eighth consecutive constructors' title. I say good on Toto Wolf and Lewis Hamilton for not going to the FIA gala tonight. Why go along and and sit there when they still when you've been robbed by a corrupt regime? Why go and be part of the facade? People feel such such raw, strong emotions uh, from Sunday in Abu Dhabi. Uh, why oh, they feel they've been robbed. They've been robbed by a corrupt regime. Oh, they'll feel, they'll feel, they'll feel. I go along to attend the prize-giving gala. Uh, I'm sure they could actually do with a break from the sport. And in time, with a bit of a break from the on-track action, from the hectic day-by-day-by-day -by -day -by -day nature of Formula One as it is at the moment, I think they'll change their opinions and they'll both want to be there in the first race, at the first race in Bahrain. Lewis Hamilton on the grid, Toto Wolff in the garage, planning another campaign uh, to try and win back that driver's championship and keep hold of a, a constructor's championship for driver and team. But qu clearly quite a lot for time to heal, given that that statement from Mercedes talked about losing... The talking head projecting, oh, time will heal this. Time will heal this. We're not getting to the crux of the problem, are we, boys? We're not exposing the true reality of the corruption that's taking place, are we, boys? Losing faith in the sport. Yeah, uh, and they have lost faith in the sport. They're, they're bewildered by the decision-making that, that went on at the end of that race. Uh, and I'm not here to apportion blame to Michael Massey, the race director. Uh, as I said at the start of the week on Sky Sports News... You're not here to apportion blame, but this is where we're going now, isn't it? Oh, it's about Michael Massey. I'm not here to apportion blame to Michael Massey, 
but mm, there's some problems with the decision making. There was no problem though, Crofty, with you and Brundle lying about the rules before the rules were broken. No problem there. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm guessing that this is the compromise that race control are making. For them to be given the chance, the best chance of having a racing lap, the, the race director's breaking the rules. This is what you're telling us. And what do Red Bull and their uh, and uh, Max and his engineer Giampiero Lambiassi want? Do they want the chance or do they not? Is that authentic commentary, Crofty? Because that's what you were telling us in, in um, Abu Dhabi. That's what you were telling us in Abu Dhabi before it happened. Before it happened. Absolutely right, Martin. They don't have to release the lap card. I don't think it's mandatory. And how long will they wait? Let's talk about that, shall we, Crofty? Oh, no, I don't I don't want to put blame on Michael Massey. Why don't you want to put blame on Michael Massey? Why don't you want to put blame on F1 TV for hyping the situation up and showing the, the global viewers things that were irrelevant? I've known him a long time. He's a fine man. He makes honest decisions as best he can in the heat of the moment. But there's been there's been an information. But <laughs> but there's a but, isn't there? Uh, I don't want to blame him. But but we're going to have to put this on somebody to take the heat away from everybody else. We're going to direct everybody's sight over here. Direct everybody's focus onto this, and then they'll forget all of the other shit that's going on. They won't realise that vacuum hasn't there in, in in the preceding time from sunday uh, through to where we are now yes the fia put out a statement yes there's not been an information vacuum there's been a an onslaught of media propaganda to validate that's what there's been an onslaught of media propaganda to validate today um but they haven't said enough they've not given enough reasoning and an explanation behind the decision making process and what has media done? Has media broken it down? Has media gone through the rules of the sport and explained them to people and exposed to people what was actually wrong? Or did media just say, oh, well, it's just a highly complex technical sport and you won't understand. Only the lawyers can understand this. And it was just a compressed moment and he was under pressure and we ended up with a hybrid solution. That's all media has done. Where's the journalist? Where's a journalist? Where's the expert of the sport that can say, these are the rules of the sport. This is what they mean. This is what needed to have happened. It hasn't happened, has it? Two years later, still hasn't happened, has it? You hear that from one place and one place only, because I can't see it anywhere else. And that's this YouTube channel. Nowhere else is actually saying this. The big YouTube channels are saying nothing. All they're doing, they're coining it in by appeasing the Max fans. They want everybody's clicks, everybody's money. Nobody's calling out the truth. So that we're all still making up our minds and opinions as well. And opinion is absolutely rife out there uh, on social media, on various channels. Everyone and what is opinions conditioned by? Opinions are conditioned by information that they're fed, the information that you're feeding them, the information that the media is conditioning people with, that they then form their opinions on that basis, linked with their desires. And you're lying to them, and in lying to them, you are causing conflict. If you clearly explain the facts of the situation, you remove that, you do away with all of that, this is the situation. These are the rules. This is what needs to happen. If you think otherwise, you're wrong. Everything else are your desires. These are the facts of the matter. This is what needed to have happened. This is what did happen. This is why it's wrong. This is what it caused. You've never done that. Simple situations that you as paid professionals have never exposed. Instead, what you've done, you've 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 just flooded the airwaves with bullshit, purposefully. Lies, smokescreen, mirrors, falsehoods that then has been picked up and argued about in the comments section. You've created war. You've created conflict. You did it on purpose. It's part of your strategy. 
you diverted people. You disorientated people. This is what you do. You are corrupt. Everyone's got an opinion and everyone feels very, very strongly uh, about what happened. Where is Jean Todd? The FI. Where are you? Where are you? FIA president in all of this. Where is he uh, standing up and explaining and backing his staff as well? Backing. No, it's not about backing staff. It's about exposing what is correct. It's not about backing staff. If your staff are corrupt, you don't back staff. You expose them. You sack them. You actually bring in the authorities if they are corrupt. You've just fixed a race. Right, that's criminal behaviour. You're going to pay for that. The people that were there making those honest decisions. He is not making those honest decisions. Look at the way you project this. There was nothing honest about them decisions at all. Said hardly a thing about this. And that to me shows... No, it shows an outgoing FIA president who obviously has other important matters on his mind and, and doesn't seem to want to put F1 at the forefront here. They oh, he's got other important matters on his mind. You are tasked. That is your role. You perform your role. He's not doing it. Shows he's corrupt. Talk to the FIA about their championship being tarnished. They could turn round and ease some of that tarnished nature by showing us what happened. What was the decision-making process? Michael Massey, he has a camera on him at all. You're the media. You have the ability to expose all that. You have the ability, a platform, to show the world what truly happened. You can break it down. You have experts. You've got the footage. You have the rules. You have the knowledge. You can show people this is what took place. But you're not going to do that because you were part of it. You were lying. You were paid to lie ahead of it being fixed. But now you're just project projecting this. This is all what you're paid to do. OK, and now you're talking about these cameras and this is important as well. Showing us what happened. What was the decision making process? Michael Massey, he has a camera on him at all times. His conversations are recorded. Let us see what that decision-making process was so that we can understand it and maybe Mercedes and fans of Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton feel not quite so bitter about... <laughs> yeah, well, well, firstly, let's see it. Let's see it. Where, what's happened to that? What has happened to those cameras and the audio from in FIA race control where there are at least 10 people? What's happened to that? And let's go through that and let's see if, even see if that can be trusted. Because this is likely to have been scripted well before then anyway, with this desire for a racing finish. So it doesn't even matter. There's likelihood that those in FIA race control would be behaving in exactly the same way that all of the team strategists were behaving in that, in those safety car laps. And they were just accepting of, oh, we think he might get the race started like this when that's not normal. So it's likely that that was going on in FIA race control, but we never even get to see that. But then, oh, but at least if they did that, then the Mercedes fans and Lewis Hamilton fans would be would be able to take it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Let us see what that decision making process was so that we can understand it. And maybe Mercedes and fans of Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton feel not quite so bitter about what went on. Let's talk of manipulation of a championship being rigged. That, that is absolutely preposterous. That, that... That's it, you tell that. It's absolutely preposterous that the championship could be rigged. Absolutely preposterous. Is that right, Crofty? It's absolutely preposterous that F1 TV didn't show you what was going on at Turn 14, interjected with messages which were irrelevant, which weren't in accordance with the rules, it's absolutely preposterous that Martin Brundle and you were lying about them rules. It's absolutely preposterous that before those rules were broken, you were suggesting, well, I think this is the compromise that race direction is making, that you could predict that, Crofty. That's, that's quite preposterous to me. It's absolutely preposterous that race control broke the rules of the sport to change the outcome of the event. Nobody called that out. Nobody was outraged by that. It's absolutely preposterous that the four FIA stewards then basically just rubber stamp that when it was absolutely preposterous what took place in that steward's appeal. And now what's absolutely preposterous is every media presentation just serves to try and validate it. 
But Crofty tells us... Let's talk of manipulation of a championship being rigged. That, that is absolutely preposterous. That, that, to me, did not happen. That, to me, did not happen. That, to me, did not happen. This is what I am paid to tell you. you I have to convince you that that, to me, did not happen. Okay, this is just my opinion. No, well, yeah, I'm sure it is. It's your opinion. You're a lying fuck. You're part of it. And you're then put on the screen to lie even more to people to tell it's fine. It's fine. Believe me. I'm not part of this. I didn't do anything. It's all fine. You should believe it to be fine too. These are criminals. Absolute criminals. But there's an information vacuum out there uh, that is just allowing opinion and misinformation allowing opinion and misinformation and why is that because no media has ever revealed it and the media is the ones that are presenting the misinformation the media are the ones that are lying to everybody introducing these bullshit scenarios that then get argued about which aren't even any factor to do with this uh, to spiral and I think now, now Mercedes... And you wanted it to spiral because what it does, it just generates you more money. It generates the space of Formula One more money, which generates you for being involved in Formula One more money. It's by design. These have, have said they won't be appealing, and I can understand that as well. An FIA Court of Appeal is not going to overturn an FIA decision. Uh, that changes and alters the course of a championship. That just isn't going to happen. Uh so you're validating. You don't go, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just accept that um, a court, its own court, is not going to overturn its own decision. Well, what if the decision's wrong? What is the difference between right and wrong in life? Oh, we should just accept that, oh, that's just that's just the process. They just won't do it. No, let's change that then. Let's let's eradicate corruption. Let's not accept that. Let's not just say, oh yeah, they're not they're not gonna do the right thing there. Once they've done something corrupt, they're just gonna stand by their corruption. You've got no chance of them overturning themselves. Whoa, 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 whoa. What you're doing is you are tolerating wrongness. It's time for change. It's time for change. Uh, but now that appeal uh, is not forthcoming from Mercedes, it is time to move on and to move on properly. <laughs> here we go. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. Properly with the sport here. The FIA say we are going to have a review. We are going to uh, put procedures in place to look exactly. Yeah, we'll go through that. We will go through that review. Like I say, a 14 year old child could have produced something better. It's disgusting what went on and change for the future and they have got to change for the future because the sporting regulations as they stand at the moment in some areas are causing too many grey areas and what happened in Abu Dhabi was not the first time this season we've seen those absolute rubbish absolute rubbish again part of your narrative to suggest to people that there's there's confusion there's confusion and nobody understands the rules they understood them for 198 of them, 199 Grand Prix. It was the 199th one where, oh, we're now confused. And there's a problem with the regulations. Oh, we've changed this word here from any to all. And it's all fine now. And everybody conducts themselves in exactly the same way that they did in the 198 prior to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi was the problem. Too many grey areas for Abu Dhabi. But now it's all sorted. Yeah. regulations being called into question yeah don't forget belgium and, and the two races there uh, don't you worry i won't forget that the two races there um, i'll be very brief on this formula one contributes 60 percent of the fia's income it is about time the governing body spent 60 percent of their time looking after this sport that is enjoyed by hundreds of millions of people that's it you keep shaking that fist there crofty you keep shaking that fist so their income is dictated by Formula One, sixty percent of it. So if Formula One makes money, FIA make money. Who's going to be ruling who? Who is going to be ruling who? Who's directing who? Who's directing how that money is made? Who's maximising how much money is made? Is this a sport? 
So they turn it into a show to maximise money. Are the sports governing body doing their job to govern the sport? Or are they uh, just falling into line to uh, appease the money men of the sport? I think we know the answers to this. Around the world and, and doing things the right way. And at the moment, things are not being done right. So Absolutely right, Crofty. How do we move forward from here? I don't know how many marks you would give, looking at the season as a whole, how many marks you'd give the stewards and those who control races. <laughs> how many marks would you give the stewards? Out of you ten? <sighs> Get a head start. Oh, dear me. Wait there. We're back in the room. Five out of ten. Uh, to be honest, I'll, I'll sit 50-50 on the, on the fence there, but I'll put a caveat in. Five out of ten is not 50-50, is it? Five out of ten is piss poor rating. It's not 50-50. Oh, but let's listen to what the caveat is. The stewards should be paid properly for what they do. We should have a... Oh, well, excuse shit decision-making by saying, oh, well, they're not paid enough. Oh, they're not paid enough to make good decisions. If you don't pay them right, then you can excuse them being biased in their decision-making. Fucking ridiculous permanent stewarding panel so that we get consistency with decisions we can't chop no 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 you got consistency that consistency was constantly validating max verstappen don't use this as an excuse you've got corruption in play you've got people making the wrong decisions that are favoring certain drivers and certain teams oh but it's because you're not paying them enough well who, who is paying them where are they getting the money from that makes them want to favor that certain team and driver or is it they've got other views that they don't like a certain team and another driver based on their personal opinions, their personal, um, you know, hopes, whether them be great white hopes or otherwise. Up and change the stewards working to a, a, a collection of sporting regulations that allow for a grey area and hope for... Cons they don't allow for a grey area, I've clearly explained it. There's nothing grey about Article 48 in those 2021 regulations. Nothing grey whatsoever. And there's nothing grey about 15.3. And I'm going to do an article on 50, uh, a video on 15.3. Consistency. So first and foremost, let's have proper stewards being paid a proper amount of money to do a proper job. We have a race director. Let's just not have corrupt stewards. I'm sure they get paid handsomely. I'm sure they get paid handsomely. Your average worker in the UK... I bet you they don't get what the stewards get for the FIA races. I bet you they don't get jetted around the world to adjudicate on a Formula One race. Quite a cushy number, I'd say. Who is overworked and is stressed. And in the past... <laughs> oh, somebody's overworked and they are stressed. They have to, 23 times a year, go to a four-day event, look around the circuit, check it safe, have a team of people working underneath them and adjudicate on a sporting event. Oh, it's so overworked and, and, and overstressed. If you can't do it, don't do it. There's plenty of people that are capable of. We had 16 races a season. One man, one person could do the job. Now we have 23 races for next season. And we have, we have a race director that is... Yeah, yeah, yeah I, know, I know what you're saying. Just the same as a junior doctor working 90 hours a week. Having have to go through university for six or seven years. Just the same as that. Overworked. This poor race director. I feel sorry for him. There, having to try and save people's lives. Getting fucking real world, dickhead. Swamped is overloaded with work. He needs help. And he, and he needs a team around him so that he can delegate some of the work outside of races that he's having to go and do to travel. Well, that's quite easy, isn't it? Make his job just about race directing. Not a problem. To other circuits, to look at safety, to look at grading, to look at inspections of tracks, to look at other single-seater championships as well. No, we need... Yeah, these are all reasons why he broke the rules to set it up for Max Verstappen. We need a proper F1 race director who works only on F1. We need a new set of regulations that are drawn... That's not going to solve the problem, is it? ...drawn up by the governing body, not by the teams... It's nothing to do with a new set of regulations. The regulations are fine. The teams didn't write them regulations. Charlie Whiting developed those regulations. So 
why are you projecting that the regulations are drawn up by the teams? And I think it's in, in no other sport do I know of that the, the, the competitors have such an influence over the regulations. The government. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Sporting, sporting regulations, the competitors don't have an influence over. The technical regulations in terms of the design of the car, then yes, sometimes the teams will have an input of that because that's the engineers getting together and, and de discussing and determining what is possible and the parameters in which they are going to go down to which develop the cars. Okay, That's the nature of this type of sport. But the sporting regulations, how competition is contested, the teams don't determine that. The governing body should draw up the regulations, present them to the teams and say, that's it, now get on with it. If you've got any complaints, we'll hear them, but these are the regulations as we see fit. And that's how you then... And that's what it is, but what are you doing? You're, 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 you're projecting all this bullshit as if, oh, these are all the problems. And everyone's going, oh, yeah, I can see how confusing this is. This all seems so wrong, doesn't it? That's because you're just presenting a load of bullshit, Crofty. Absolute bullshit. And go forward. And you put the right amount of people, paid, proper professionals in place to make sure something like this never happens again. The idea they're already there. And the trouble is they're all corrupt, like you are, Crofty. The paid professionals in place to make sure this never happens again what that you lie about the rules of the sport before they're broken on the last lap you know in those last five laps you're just a liar you're just being paid to present this shit eyes of the world were on formula one on sunday night and yes it was one of the most dramatic last laps we've ever seen in the grand prix but sportingly was it properly fair no, not at that time. Because it shouldn't have happened. There was a mistake made, be it not putting out a red flag. But I, I'm assuming this is the best compromise the race directors want to make sure we get a racing end to this, this race. Uh, um, so what do Red Bull want? Do they want the chance or do they not? Do you remember that, Crofty? Bef before it happened, before that mistake was made. Do you remember saying that? It's funny that you could predict that mistake being made before that mistake was made. It's funny that you could predict that being made before it was made. It's funny that you endorse what Martin Brundle was saying when he said, oh, they don't have to release the lapped cars. I don't think it's mandatory. And how long will they wait when you know it's got to be at least one lap? You're endorsing all of that, Crofty. But a mistake was made. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who could have predicted the grey area? Be it not having the safety car continue uh, for another lap, that the regulations weren't followed properly. Uh, but that drama is what we should be talking about, not uh, one team, one driver feeling cheated and robbed from a championship. Oh, we, 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 we should be talking about the drama, not the fact that somebody was cheated and robbed. We shouldn't be talking about what, that, that somebody was cheated out of a record-breaking eighth title. We shouldn't be talking about that. Fucking disgusting. And Max Verstappen should stand on the stage tonight and say, I am a world champion and should be allowed to celebrate without a cloud. Because we shouldn't be talking about Lewis Hamilton being robbed. Max Verstappen should be allowed to celebrate. Hanging over what has been an excellent season for him as well. So you've got to feel a little bit sorry for, for Sapping in a way, haven't you? I mean, he won't care that much because he's the champion and that's really all he cares about at the end of the day. That's what he wanted at the start of the season. That's what he wanted when he started driving these cars. But he's not been able to just wallow in a glorious victory because too many people have said it's not a glorious victory. No, absolutely. And whatever side you're on, and, and there are Max Verstappen fans and there are Lewis Hamilton fans, yes. Anybody that celebrates that sort of thing is not an authentic sportsman. It's as simple as that. If you have played sport, you know what authentic victory feels like. That isn't it. So if you are there whoop whooping and celebrating that, just shows you the calibre of human being you are. Simple as that. You do have to feel for a man who has worked very, very hard. We have to feel for him. We have to feel sorry for Max that people aren't recognising him to be hoisted upon the shoulders of his team to celebrate being a champion. He, he, this is his dream, and he's achieved it. Oh, he's dreamt about this, so he should be able to celebrate this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lots of kids, 
Lots of us dream about shit. Doesn't mean it happens. We dream doesn't mean it happens, does it? So, oh, but he's dreamt about it. So it's okay that they gave it him. And it's not fair that he's not allowed to celebrate it now. Fucking hell. This dream. And she goes back to the Red Bull factory uh, yesterday uh, with Christian Horner and Adrian Newey and all the workforce there. They should be allowed to celebrate, like I say, without this cloud hanging over them. Uh, and, and it's a cloud that smells as bitter and acrid as probably the smoke that was uh, coming from the flares in Milton Keynes when Max Verstappen drove in yet. Why? Has it ever happened before? Has it ever happened before like that? Yesterday. Um, yes, I do feel sorry for him in a sporting context, because he has been excellent this season. But I also, my heart also goes out to Lewis Hamilton because he's been as it. He feels sorry for Max. Max has just been gifted a world championship and Crofty feels sorry for him. Oh, let's feel, let's, let's all feel bad for Max, shall we? Excellent. And it's been a brilliant battle. And we should be talking about the races the, and the enjoyment and the entertainment that they... Yeah, we should be talking about that. We should be talking about that. Everybody, look over there. That's what we should be focusing on. Look over there. That's what we should be talking about. Let's not focus on the corruption. Let's not focus on the real impact it's had here. Let's not focus on the fact that me and Martin were lying about the rules of the sport before the rules were broken. Let's not focus on F1 TV. Let's not focus on Michael Massey and the 10 people in race control. Let's not focus on the FIA stewards. We should be focusing on the excitement. Let's not focus on the fact that somebody was robbed out of their valid accomplishment. Let's focus on the fact we should be feeling sorry for Max Verstappen. Given us, uh, not a governing body who, sadly... For, for, for quite a while now. Oh, we should be focusing on the gov not the governing. We shouldn't be focusing on the governing body, who who uh, are the people that are really now at fault. Have have not been looking after their most prized possession enough, and maybe the FIA need to take a long hard look now and say, right, do we need a special branch of our organisation? That's a uh, part of the police force, isn't it? A special branch. We could do with them. We could do with them. Don't want to seem to do their job. Law enforcement doesn't want to seem to do their job in tackling crime. You criminal bastard. That just concentrates on Formula One. So we can get on with the great work that we do on road safety and, 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 and mobility around the world. The FIA promote, promote road safety by allowing and enabling driving standards like Max Verstappen produced in 2021. That's a great way of setting an example to the young people that are going to get their driving licences and go onto the roads, as young people do, and want to replicate how motor racing drivers drive, because that's what young lads do. And they'll look at Max Verstappen and they'll think that that's OK. And the governing body, the FIA, that are there to promote road safety, what's their role? World, and actually allow an F1 department to run F1 so that we don't get involved quite as much. That looks after itself. It's an issue for the incoming FIA president. We'll have a new president in the next couple of days. Jean Todd will, will walk off after, after many years of hard work and service to the Oh, hard work and service, and no mention of corruption. Sport, uh, but it's an issue that needs sorting out fast, and preferably in time for next season, because those regulations need rewriting, and they need rewriting fast and properly. Crofty. Yeah, it needs sorting out fast, and those regulations need rewriting. No, they don't. And what did we get just before qualifying for the first Grand Prix of the 2022 season? We got that report. It was finally released, and they said, it's all right. We're happy with everything. Move on. That's why you're the man to talk us through 100 minutes of action every fortnight through the season. Look forward to you doing it again, hopefully with Lewis Hamilton on the starting grid uh, from March. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Crofty. Thanks a lot. Every single one of these presentations takes the same format. Lies, mirrors, bullshit, smokescreen. Every single one. And what have you got here? You've got reactions, 8.3 thousand Thumbs up. 8.3 thousand people have watched that and have gone, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that.
They're the minds that you're conditioning. It's been viewed by 413,000 people. This is what you've told them. This is what their understanding is. Oh, OK. This is what Crofty is telling us. Fair enough. It must be like that, mustn't it? Nobody's. But who's picking through that and drilling down to the truth? Who is picking through that and drilling down to what is really going on? Who knows? Who actually could identify that the, the things that Brundle and Crofty were talking about before the fix were wrong? Who has explained to these 400,000 people that have watched this that that was what was going on? They're oblivious to it. They're absolutely oblivious to what really took place because they don't know. And unless you do know, you don't get the chance to find out and you just accept the bullshit narrative that you're being given. And this is the problem. This is the media matrix conditioning the minds. They've perpetrated corruption and they've got the platform to convince you it's all OK. Move along. Move along. They make the money. They don't get how to account for their corruption, their crimes. And we need to do something about this. It's truly disgusting. Anyway, more to come. See you soon.